Look back. What heck of an effort. Here's O'Neal the trailer. From Anthony Hardaway. How do you stop that? Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. And hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello, good day, everyone. How's it going? My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in into the Basketball Time Machine. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends talking about this sensational Anthony Penny Hardaway. And yes, I have done videos like this in the past, but hey, I found some new clips and you can never get enough of Penny Hardaway. But before I start with this episode, quick question. Could you please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content? All right, you guys, let's do it. Now the first player's opinion that I want to take a look at is his former teammate, Brian Shaw, who played alongside Penny when they were both playing for the Orlando Magic. Let's take a look. I think Penny Hardaway would have been in the discussion, especially if he would have had a long career, 15 to 18 years in the NBA. I think he'd be in the discussion about being the GOAT. He was that talented. He was 6'8". He could post up. He could shoot threes. He could handle the ball. He was one of the best passers that the league has ever seen. Um, he had a super high basketball IQ and anybody who played against him from Jordan to Kobe and any anybody else would tell you the same thing. I mean, it's just unfortunate that he had the injury and never got well enough because he came back. He wanted to play so bad, came back way too early and it never it never got right. It's also unfortunate that the players of today like didn't really get a chance to to really, really see him. Because, like I said, he would be in the discussion as as one of the best to ever do it. And the next player that we obviously have to take a look at is Shaquille O'Neal, who not only still believes that Penny probably would be in the gold conversation, but who obviously had a lot of experience on blue chips and the Orlando Magic, so he knows Penny probably better than most of us. Let's hear what he has to say. Penny wasn't as good as Kobe. Like, let's be honest, Penny sure was not going to be a top three Penny player. Penny got injured. Penny had knees. Oh, oh, you sure about that? Can you say Penny could have been a top three player? all time because that's what Kobe is. Yes. yes. He didn't get injured, yes. Oh, hold on. Penny came in like that. Penny was a dog. Hold on. Penny came in like that. It took Kobe two, maybe two and a half years to get to that level. Penny came in, he was already like that. Yeah. First year he came in, we went to the finals. Penny was cold. And that's why I always tell people he was Kobe before Kobe. People give me flag like that, you know, I'd say he, he, he couldn't have turned out, but if he wouldn't have got injured, he definitely he definitely be up there. Definitely. Hey, Penny was a cold cat. You know it. You was coming up, like, who was the guys you were watching outside of MJ? Because I know we all watch MJ, but some of them guys you, like, took to. to be like, man, I'm going to take that and put it in my game on. Well, of course, you know, Penny was, Penny was yeah. my MJ. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that, Penny in his prime years, I don't same. even know if he really reached his prime years. You know, his earlier yeah. years, he was so dumb. Crazy. He was so good, bro. Like crazy, so man. good, Dude, crazy. Nice. You know what I mean? That's crazy. How they like, fit in right away? As soon as he got in, wow. Like he was, he was like, all star right away. He was like, wow. Yeah. Smooth. <laughs> yeah. Cerebral. You know what I'm saying? Just he had it all, bro. Can facilitate. I was like, Ooh. So and it looked I, good. It looks so he yeah, the ball, oh, and that everything just looked, looked so too good. sweet. I just looks, yeah, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just look <laughs> like him, dog. Portrait in motion. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was my favorite. That was my MJ. On the parquet. Oh, inside pivot. I've never seen that. Uh, uh, that's. I can't even figure out that move right there. I gotta rewatch this real quick. Off the right foot, a half spin. Oh, oh, the whole spin. Off the right into a smitty into a step back. But he uses opposite foot first. He, I mean. I think, you know, it's so, it's so funny when you see a move as an athlete, you start doing the timing in your head about how, to, how it would go down. Crossover, half spin. That, like. He puts his back to the basket, 20 feet from the basket. He's basically posting up from the three-point line, and then he decides not to put his back to the basket, but do a step back and turn around 
and throw up a prayer with two seconds left on the clock. I wonder what's the name of that move. Like, we, we got to call that something. This is bad basketball. If my son saw this clip and said, I'm going to work on that move, I would say, sir, you're better off cutting off your left foot than working on this move. This is not something that anyone should ever attempt again. And you know what? I'm going to go wax and say this. I've never seen anybody do this step back before. The move you just saw Penny do, it, it's a combination of a spin and a hesitation that'll put somebody on their heels and they don't know what you're about to do. It looks so wrong, but so right. <laughs> He's dancing. He's dancing, people don't. People don't know about Penny Hardaway. If you don't know, now you know. Like, you have to be special to do something like that. Did you see the footwork on that? Like, it's one thing when you're working on that type of footwork, but to have that footwork translate into an in-game experience and it looked as effortless as that, like that's, you don't, you can't teach that. That was a step back long before it was a step back. It looked less like a travel. Penny was like before his time, right? Like now we're, we're seeing all the Euros and, and James Harden with the, the step back, step back, step back, step back off of one leg. Like Penny was already doing that. Like he was already in his, in, what they say in his bag. When he was in his bag, his carry-on, he had a suitcase he threw under the air, had a backpack on. Like, Penny was that dude. James Harden has step-backs in his package that don't make sense. He's got one step-back where he actually steps back into a one-arm handstand and then kicks the ball at the basket, but he has never done this 180 step-back ever. We don't get this anymore because that's a bad shot. Sorry, should have been a three-year-old game. Penny Hardaway or Kyrie Irving? Penny Hardaway, stop it. Ooh. Ooh. Stop it. No explanation? He just stop it. On. My face is the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around. Hardaway, oh, beautiful dish. Grant with the jam. Oh, that's a good one. Anthony Hardaway, after a steal, goes down and wraps it around and just finds a wide open Nick Anderson. Dribbles between two defenders. He was a lot of people's favorite players. He was like for a while. It was you know for us when you talk about the most popular players, it was Michael Jordan then Penny Hardaway. Like everybody had those pennies too. Like the next shoe that was in line was pennies. I, I used to wear the Penny Hardaways all day when I was in college, and they went with my college uniform with Kansas. I had the blue and white ones. Oh my gosh, Penny Hardaway has the most underrated run of signature shoes in the history of signature shoes. Go ahead. He will go shoe for shoe against every single person in the world except for Michael Jordan. There is not another NBA athlete with the consistency, with the volume, and with the impact and the long tail. People are still wearing foam posits. I would be wearing foam posits right now if I can afford them and I'm on television and I can't afford them. In a league where Michael Jordan had Air Jordan and Jumpman, Penny still was able to have a little Penny imprint and be successful. With Nike, with Penny Hardaway, and with Chris Rock. I think a lot of people remember Little Penny as a puppet, but Little Penny was not a puppet. Little Penny was Chris Rock, one of the greatest stand-up comedians to ever hold a microphone. Oh my gosh. Those were the best commercials ever. I'm telling you, I was, I was in love with Penny. From a culture perspective, I can see, you know, it's my nerdy side coming out though. I, I saw like brands start to pivot on how they uh, created content, which is pretty cool. They started to create content based on personalities for culture, which I like. That's Michael's what, first miss there? Nick Anderson to the left hand. Nice move by Nick Anderson. Remaining in the fourth quarter, Hardaway. Penny Hardaway to the reverse 
He has 13 points. You know, I said it countless times before. Penny Hardaway, to me, is not only one of my favorite players of all time, but I think he was once in a decade player. He was sensational in the complete package. You had a great shooter. You had a sensational passer. Basketball IQ was off the charts. And he would lead by example. Like, he could do whatever your team needed in order to win. And that's a quality that not too many players have. Not even that many superstars. So Penny Hardaway, in my books, yes, I agree. He could have been one of the greatest, not in the GOAT conversation, but definitely one of the greatest players of all time.